Hello and welcome to this tutorial on calculating pi, specifically using the Leibniz formula. In this video, I shall define Leibniz pi, give an 8-bit binary demonstration, and show a code example. The prerequisite knowledge required for this video is that you know what a fixed point number is, you know how to add and subtract fixed point numbers, as well as being able to divide binary numbers. So this here is the formula for Leibniz pi. What it does is it takes the reciprocals of odd numbers and adds half of them and subtracts the other half. Note that I will not derive this in this video, and if you want a mathematical proof, look on the wiki. So then, how would an 8-bit simple CPU calculate this? But first, how do we calculate a reciprocal? Note that for 1 divided by n, where n is an odd number, that will always give you a value that's less than or equal to 1. What this means is that we cannot easily represent that using normal binary integers. So we must use fixed point values in order to represent these. Note that we could also use floating points, but that would just overcomplicate the problem and make it slower on a simple 8-bit CPU. Now if we take one third in binary and multiply it by 2 to the power of 8 and cut off everything below the decimal place, it gives us this value here, which is our 8-bit fixed point number, which represents one third. How then do we calculate this value on a simple CPU? So what we could do is work out what 1 is as a fixed point number. If we take 1 and multiply it by 2 to the power of 8, we get this number here. Now since we need to fit it in 8 bit, we must cut off this ninth bit, which is the 1. What this means is that we will represent the number 1 as a fixed point value of 0. The 1 is still there, it's just not within our 8 bit. Now we must divide our fixed point value. So to calculate one third, we must take our fixed point value of 1 and divide it by 3. This division can be calculated either by using repeated subtraction or a division by shift and subtract. So what this gives us is 256 divided by 3, which equals 85, which is our fixed point value for one third. Now we just calculate each reciprocal and alternate between adding and subtracting them. So starting with the reciprocal of 1, we divide our fixed point value of 1 by 1, giving us the fixed point value of 1. We then add that to our answer, which starts as 0. So now our answer is the fixed point value for 1. Next we have the reciprocal of 3, so we calculate that, and this time we subtract it from the answer. Then we have the reciprocal of 5, again we work that out, and this time add it to the answer. After that we have the reciprocal of 7, which we subtract from the answer. Then we have the reciprocal of 9, which we add to the answer. So what we could do is create a table where we write down what the last reciprocal was that we calculated. We then write down the current value for the answer. Then what we can do is calculate the answer for pi in base 10 by dividing the fixed point value by 2 to the power of 6. Note that we divide by 2 to the power of 6 instead of 2 to the power of 8. This is because the Leibniz formula gives us pi divided by 4. So we must multiply the answer by 2 to the power of 2 in order to get pi. And as we calculate more reciprocals, the answer in base 10 gets closer and closer to pi. So how then would this look in code? So this here is a relatively high level B code program which implements the algorithm we discussed just now. We first start by setting the answer equal to 0. We then set a, the odd number equal to 1. This will keep track of the odd number that we're on. Then we create a variable called reciprocal and set it to nothing. Now we have a while true loop that will go forever and we first start by setting the reciprocal equal 
to 0, which represents our fixed point value of 1, and we subtract the odd number from it. Then we set reciprocal equal to reciprocal divided by the odd number, and then add 1. The reason we do this, the reason we must subtract the odd number first and add 1 to the reciprocal afterwards, is because otherwise we are doing 0 divided by our odd number. And if we do that, the result will be 0. So what we need to do is subtract the divisor, which is the odd number, once from the reciprocal to emulate the ninth bit being active. Then all we have to do to correct the answer is add 1 to the answer. Then we set the answer equal to the answer plus the reciprocal. Then we add 2 to the odd number. Next, we once again take 0 and subtract the odd number and set that to the reciprocal. Then we do reciprocal divided by odd number plus 1 and set that to be the reciprocal. Then we take that away from the answer. So this time we are subtracting it. And once again, we then add 2 to the odd number. This loop will carry on forever and the answer will get closer to pi. And this program here is a relatively low level version of the program we just looked at. We first start by setting register 1 equal to 0. This is the answer being set to 0. Then we set register 2 equal to 1, which is the odd number. Then inside of the while loop, we subtract register 2 from 0. This is subtracting the odd number from 0, and we put the result into register 3, which is the reciprocal. We then divide register 3 by register 2, which is the reciprocal, divided by the odd number. We then put the result into register 3. We then add 1 to register 3, which is the reciprocal, and then we add register 3 to register 1, which which adds the reciprocal to the answer. Next, we add 2 to register 2, which adds 2 to the odd number. Then we do 0 minus register 2, which is 0 minus the odd number. And we put the result into register 3, which is the reciprocal. Then we do register 3 divided by register 2, which is the reciprocal divided by the odd number, and put the result into the reciprocal. Then we add 1 to register 3, which is the reciprocal. Then we subtract register 3 from register 1, which subtract the reciprocal from the answer. Then we add 2 to register 2, which is the odd number. Then finally, we jump back to the beginning of the while loop. And with that, that's everything I wanted to cover in this video. If you have made it this far, please consider liking and subscribing and joining the URCL Discord, which is linked in the description. Thanks so much for watching and cheerio!